Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay and welcome to Inside the Hem where we dive into all things sewing with style and budget in mind. This holiday season, I'm bringing you 30 days of festive fashion sewing. Each day we'll explore a new sewing project to inspire your holiday wardrobe. Whether you are going for cozy, chic, or a little bit glam, join me each day as we add a touch of handmade magic to this season's celebrations. For today's video, I chose a wrap dress. It is a great choice for a holiday event because it's versatile, it's flattering, it can be dressed up or dressed down depending on the fabric and accessories. It's just suitable for a variety of party settings while still looking chic and polished. The wrap design also cinches in at the waist, creating an hourglass silhouette that is universally flattering on most body types. And when I think of a wrap dress, there is only one kind of style that I think of, and that is romantic and feminine. Of course, you can make a minimalist version, something edgy, or even classic and traditional, but in my opinion, nothing compares to a beautifully delicate wrap dress. Romantic and feminine style is something where you're going to find flowy skirts, ruffles, lace, and soft hues. So it's the perfect style to apply to a wrap dress that's already inherently kind of flowy and flirty. All right. And when thinking of holiday wrap dresses, I mean, one of the most obvious places to go would be anthropology, right? I think that they do romantic and feminine specifically well. Um, so I headed there and I found this really beautiful version. So what we're looking at here is a wrap dress. It has a set in sleeve with a long, like almost bishop or lantern. I always get the sleeves confused. Almost uh, a, a version of that, but it's very subtle, right? And then they have an elastic waist or elastic casing here at the wrist. And it appears to be seven eighths inch, seven eighths long sleeve like not three quarters but seven eighths they also have this detail right here which is gathered so it's a very long close-up of the bodice here you can see that they probably have a snap or something holding that closed there's the back again that um added ruffle kind of scoots around the lower part of the bum um, and then there is the belt indicating it's a true wrap dress. Okay, so for that, the pattern I chose is Butterick uh, 6873. And you can see there are some differences, but we're going to do a little bit of pattern hacking, okay? We're going to challenge ourselves a little bit. It's only November the 5th. You guys still have plenty of time, maybe like a month before any real holiday events begin happening. Okay. So this is a true wrap dress. I have a sew along for this dress on my YouTube channel. So if you want some help just sewing it as is, feel free to head there. Um, but what we're gonna do is we are going to extend this sleeve to make it a 7 8 long sleeve. It's just adding length to the sleeve. You don't need to do anything else to it. Just add it on right in the middle of the sleeve here and then you'll still do the same elastic casing you'll still attach it to the bodice the same way so on and so forth now for that flounce or that ruffle we do have options you could definitely shorten this part of the skirt and lengthen this part of the ruffle in order to get something that more accurately emulates the anthropology version so yours would come down like this, right? Scoot around your bum and then come back around here. And then all of that would be filled in with this same ruffle piece. It would just be a lot longer, all right? Not impossible to do. It's actually fairly simple. It does take a couple of extra steps and a little bit of brain power. Um, but if that's not up your alley, you could definitely just do a simple tiered skirt like this or you could leave it long and plain like she has here. I'm pretty sure this is an African wax cotton fabric, so it's got a little bit of weight to it. When we start talking about our fabric, you'll see that ours is gonna be a little bit drapier, so you wouldn't get this much of a structure to your dress. It'll fall in on you a little bit more, so think of it a little bit more like a flowy maxi skirt. So for the fabric recommendations, they're recommending Shally, cotton blends, crepe, and rayons. 
Um, again, like I've said in all of these videos, these are just suggestions and they're usually based on whatever season this pattern was released. So if you're thinking about it for a different season, you could obviously include things like linen and chambray. And if we're going into the holidays, you could think about, you know, velvet and sequins and, you know, all of those quintessential holiday fabrics. So do not be um, like limited by these. What you want to take from this mostly is the weight and drape of the fabric. And across the board here, we're looking at lightweight drapey fabrics. That's what you're going to be looking for. Okay, so the notions wise, we just need two buttons and then some elastic if you're going to do the sleeve like the anthropology version has. This one calls for, and again, we're going to have to kind of guesstimate on the fabric, especially if you're doing the altered version. Um, but let's just say it's B because B has a nice big ruffle on it. So B's fabric is four yards. All right. And then we get a bust measurement. So we get a bust measurement, but no body measurements. So that's fun. You're looking for the size actually that has a little bit of room in it. Again, go watch my sew along. Um, the first video talks all about um, sizing, fit, alterations, all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's the pattern. Now let's talk about the fabric. So the anthropology version um, you can see here has a really beautiful kind of florally fabric. Some parts are a little bit shiny, like right through here, and some parts are matte, and they almost, it kind of looks like mesh, right? And then when you go to the product details, you can see that it says viscose nylon. So taking into consideration both the look of this and this information here, I'm assuming that they used a burnout velvet. What is burnout velvet? So imagine if you had a velvet fabric um, and in parts of it, you like scraped away the little furs of the velvet and all you had left was like the backing of the velvet. That's what burnout velvet is. It's actually pretty common, pretty easy to find by the yard. Um, and so the one I found is this. It's a sage green floral burnout hand dyed silk velvet fabric. Okay, so she's very special. <laughs> this is beautiful. This is exceptional. This is a really knockout, you want to make a really great impression, burnout velvet. Um, they do have other colors, purple and fuchsia pink, if you want to check those out. Um, but you can see it has the mesh and it has the velvet and it has this kind of all over floral design. We don't get any other pictures on this one. It is 1445 by the quarter yard. So this is very misleading. So by the yard, it's it's a lot. It's $60 a yard, but it is really beautiful and it is hand dyed silk velvet. Okay, that's special, but I get that's not for everybody. So I went ahead and found another one. All right, this one is from Stylish Fabric. It's $10 a yard and she's polyester nylon, polyester, and spandex, okay? But you get the same sort of um, illusion with the see-through kind of like mesh parts and then the shiny velvet parts. This one is a floral, as you can see, but it's kind of a little bit more of a viney floral one. And I think they only have this wine color. So you would buy this, you would buy some kind of lining fabric and you can kind of sort of see, can you see this right here? That's the lining that they used. So that's probably like a rayon Bimberg or something equally drapey and lightweight. You're not going to want to use a cotton fabric on something this drapey. You want them to kind of, ha you know, act the same way. So it's probably some kind of rayon in a solid color. So, and then you just kind of treat it like um, an underlining. So back to our pattern, um, the bodice is cut separately from the skirt. So you would underline the entire bodice. You could leave the sleeves sheer if you wanted. They might have done that. It's really hard to tell because their skin tone is kind of so similar to this. So you can leave the sleeves sheer if you want, underline this entire bodice, and then underline this guy. And then for the ruffle, just sew it on like a normal lining would be. So what do you think of this one? 
Thanks for joining me for today's festive fashion project. I hope it sparks some inspiration for your holiday sewing. Links to the pattern and both of the fabrics are linked in the description box. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow's project where we will be creating a timeless pair of tuxedo pants that will be sure to impress this season. I can't wait to see you back here for more 30 days of festive fashion. Bye.